The first time I heard of the game Velvet Assassin, it was in a video calling it one of the worst video games ever. It didn't stand out enough for me to really remember it through all those months later, but it came back into my memory as I was scrolling through the discount games on Steam. I saw a 50 cent game, and I remembered it as supposedly being bad. Of course I bought it. Especially because while a lot of people hate it, some people actually say it's really good. There's no neutral ground here. Velvet Assassin either completely sucks or it totally doesn't. So I will be the judge of that today. Velvet Assassin came out in 2009 from the developers Replay Studios. You've probably never heard of them because they had three poorly received games and then consequently fell apart. Their second one was this, a third person stealth game inspired by a real World War II spy, Violet Zabo. Sounds like a cool premise, right? We're off to a good start if you ignore the fact that it helped make a company bankrupt. Well, it actually is pretty cool from the outside, so let me tell you a bit more. You play as Violet Summer, a British spy who goes on different missions to take down Nazis. That means sabotage, assassinations, gathering information, your usual spy stuff. That's almost all there is to the plot, however. When you start the game, you're given the information that Violet is, quote, badly hurt and haunted by dreams and memories. So you're not actually playing through these missions as they happen, but reliving them while you're in the hospital. As you play through the levels, sometimes Violet will narrate like she's retelling the story in her mind, and it's a great way to show a character's thoughts and give some hints or extra information. Somehow I had to find a way past the guards to reach the train. Not a simple task. Another aspect of Violet being unconscious is morphine. Inside your missions, you can find morphine at different spots. This doesn't behave as medicine, and you can't use it as a sedative or something against enemies. No, no, no. You tell me, what do you think happens when you inject yourself with morphine in this game? I'll give you a minute to guess. Well, you probably didn't get it right, because this is what happens. Everything is suddenly as rosy as love at first sight in a romance movie. Violet is no longer wearing her leather jacket, but her hospital gown. Time slows down and you can become invincible for a few moments to kill someone without having to sneak past them. This morphine mode is never ever explained, but I am guessing it's a blurred line between Violet's hospital state and her dream state. Maybe when she gets morphine in the hospital, it makes her dream state go crazy and she sees her present state instead of her past state. Regardless if that's true or not, why are these even her hospital clothes? They're like borderline lingerie. I'm almost naked. I'm fine with giving video game characters skimpy outfits because whatever, it's a video game. But in this case, it doesn't really suit the character, situation, or anything else. It feels like a cheap gimmick to get more interest for the game for those who this will interest. But for players like me, I think there's nothing hotter than the gas mask. Should have stuck to that one. Okay, so that's the main quirk of the gameplay here. The rest is pretty standard fare for a stealth game. You creep around, stab people, shoot people, hide, wear disguises, peek through keyholes, and use different things in your environment to aid in any of these things. If you're familiar with games like Hitman, it's a lot like that, but with World War II plot. There's also an experience point system that allows you to level up your health, speed, or morphine abilities. You get these points through finding collectibles, oddly enough. Some are hidden and require a lot of work to get to, so it encourages you to explore every area. I only found just over half in my first playthrough. As for the levels, they're arranged in about six missions that are separated into one to three different sections, usually two. So it's about 12 subsections, each with a different location. You get the story randomly interspersed into the levels, where once you reach certain areas, you'll be interrupted with a cutscene. The plot is very light, although of course the surrounding world is quite heavy. You will see hanged bodies and dead children in the streets. You have to give another spy cyanide. But the plot can be described very simply. Violet is a British spy, again, who got shot in one of her missions. Two men saved her, although they're unsure if they should keep her alive. All they know is that the Germans want her dead. Near the end of the game, she wakes up and you are now playing in the present instead of the memory as she tries to escape from the town. The ending is a bit disappointing, but you can't expect much else without much story in the first place. And it is realistic. If you don't want spoilers, I'll show you when to skip ahead. But basically what happens at the end is she just dies. That's it. That's seriously it. She just dies. Some cold hard realism can be good for a game like this though. World War II shouldn't be viewed through some rose colored glasses of a super happy ending anyway, even for the good guys. But yeah, it's a kind
kind of lame ending after all the hard work you put in. Now let me tell you, this game is super difficult. I don't know if it's just because I'm not great at stealth games in the first place, but it starts off by putting you in some really difficult missions. So this is all realistic of course, because I'm sure being a World War II spy was extremely hard. And you really feel truly helpless at times, and it can be really frustrating. This one level in the sewers, I tried getting through this part probably 50 times. And then when I finally did it, it crashed and hadn't saved. So I had to try it about 50 more times. It really frustrated me for the first three or four hours because you have to retry sections many, many times to figure out how to make it work. But after that, it started feeling a bit easier. I don't know if I got better or if the missions were just a bit easier in spots, but just don't give up on it if it's hard for you because practice will make it more fun. Uh, the second section, I think it's called Leave a Light On, that felt a lot easier and it was way more enjoyable than the first section. And a bit of advice, just try not to use up all your bullets shooting cabbages like I did because then all you will have to rely on is stealth. And while you're encouraged to kill everyone in stealth, sometimes that's not really possible. You can get through the game without playing it the right or perfect way, but it does actually make it harder, and it definitely is hard. At the very least, you can't hate the game for being easy. Now, it's always fun to mention the bad things in media, so let's have a few quickfire complaints. Usually when a game is saving, it just shows a little logo in the corner. But in this game, it has a large message. I wonder, was there some problem with the playtesters where they kept shedding off the game or something? It feels a bit unnecessary. It's nice to know when you've reached a checkpoint, but it's kind of annoying to see it so prominently. It kind of distracts from the moment. The AI was strange and broken at times, in a way that makes them way too smart, not way too dumb. I was seen through doors and floors multiple times, for example, and they weren't consistent. I might be able to avoid being seen in one run through only to do the exact same thing the next time and get caught. And once you do kill someone and you're dragging them towards the shadows to hide the body, I didn't like that they often flopped forward instead of backwards because I expect Violet to just lie them down instead of throwing them forward back into the light. I feel like every body flopped forward instead of backwards until the very end of the game. The sound was kind of annoying because some drums in the music were like gunshots, which made me think there were enemies shooting when there weren't. However, some songs were actually really good for an uneasy atmosphere, like one with a screeching violin or the ones in the LaBeouf level that played when guards became alert. But the sound effects were a little cheap sounding at times. The same with the menus, they just don't look fully polished. But the rest of the game looks good. It sticks with a certain color scheme that gives it a nice atmosphere. The models aren't high detail or anything, but they look fine. I did experience a few minor graphical glitches, like flames where there shouldn't have been, or when everything turned green and purple for a moment, and some levels are super dark, and you have to really turn up the brightness. But the game still looks pretty nice, if just a bit dated. But uh, the, the glitches I mentioned. They definitely happen more as the game goes on, so I wonder if the game was kind of rushed out. Another small thing I like is that the guns feel pretty good too. It's hard to explain, but some guns in video games just feel better than others, and most of these have a nice feel, something good and snappy. It might be in the aiming or something, but they just feel really good to use, so if you like guns in games, you'll like this. Unfortunately, Violet doesn't get much personality, but in a way, that actually works in the game's favor. Since they don't have much story anyway, you don't feel like you're missing out on learning more about her. And then it doesn't distract you from just focusing on the job at hand. Is the game perfect? Totally not. I've mentioned a lot of areas where it falls short. But is it as bad as people say? Totally not. I had fun, even if it was frustrating. Yeah, there's not much story, but you still get about 10 to 12 hours of your first playthrough of fairly solid gameplay. Yeah, there are fancier games, but this game is cheap and therefore totally worth the money. Even not on sale, it's only about $2. There's a ton of replay value to improve your scores in each level, and it's just a fun stealth game. I saw a review that said there's no replay value, and that's just completely untrue. It's the exact kind of game I would say has that value, because you can play it different ways, get all the collectibles, and improve your scores. Yeah, it's a little weird and buggy at times, but I have no idea why anyone would say this is such a horrible game. If anything, it's just an acquired taste. 
If you like stealth games, I would suggest you give Velvet Assassin a try. You're not losing much if you don't like it anyway. However, if you're not into stealth games, I would suggest you stay away just because it's pretty unforgiving. I don't even want to know what the harder difficulty is like. There's just like a normal and a hard, and I played on normal, and it was a bit of a struggle. It's the kind of game that you play for the actual playing, not the story, so don't suffer through it if you don't think you'll like playing most of it. Just one more final complaint is that this game is not really optimized for modern computers. I had to get some NVIDIA legacy drivers to play this, which is an easy fix, but still frustrating if you don't know what's going on. If you try the game and can't get it to work, I'll put a link in the description to where you can get it fixed very easily. So yeah, I enjoyed the game. It's a weird tale of World War II and drugs, a great challenge, and definitely not deserving of being on a worst games list, even if it falls flat at the end. I hated it at times because it was hard, but I would give this game a seal of Emma approval. 50 cents well spent. Was it a favorite? No. But it was good for a week. And I will come back to it. I really have fun sharing these interesting and more obscure video games and movies with you all, so thank you so much for watching. Stay groovy everyone, and I'll have more video game related reviews and analyses coming to you soon. Just how many games am I going to play about ladies with British accents this year? I swear I'm not purposefully seeking these out. It probably looks like I have some type or something, but I don't. Wait, I take that back. Gas masks are my type.